I never really made a conscious decision to be a writer. It was just always something that was inside me. Well, I started off writing when I was a little girl, when I was about seven or eight. Basically, from the point where I could write words, I started coming up with stories. When I was a kid, I was always going to be either be a writer or, or an artist. Uh, comics mainly, I was either going to write or draw, or ideally both. I think from the time I was very young, I was influenced by pretty much all the books I read, both the good books and the bad books. I loved a lot of science fiction and fantasy when I was a kid, but I also read westerns. Um, people don't really read westerns now, but I used to love them. Um, I loved um, things like Little Princess, because this one has a girl called Sarah in it, so I thought it was written for me. <laughs> As a young Irish writer, uh, or aspiring Irish writer, there was a whole generation of Irish writers who were becoming very well known, who were writing amazing books that were winning prizes, being turned into movies, were becoming internationally recognised. And it was very inspirational to me as a 18, 19 year old because it did say to me that um, this was not some crazy dream, that it was possible that when I was of that age, somebody has to be one of the people who's publishing novels, so why shouldn't it be me? I write a lot of my work on my old school desk from when I was 12. Uh, it's since been painted, it doesn't have the graffiti on it anymore, but I'm quite superstitious about my desk. It's teeny now, it's just about the size of me, and I've written everything, all my books on it. People often say, is it not really lonely? You're sitting for four or five hours at your desk on your own, but you know, you're with these crazy, wonderful people that you've created, so. How can you be lonely? <laughs> I know they're all in your head, so maybe I'm a bit crazy myself, but yeah, I love, I love just sitting at my desk writing, it's great. Before Skullduggery, I worked on the family farm and I was miserable, you know. Uh, but I also, my stammer was worse and I was aimless and I didn't know what I wanted to do I, and, you know, I didn't know how to get there. You know, the difference between that and me is a moment, and the difference is the moment Skullduggery Pleasant popped into my head. That's the only thing that separates that Derek from this Derek. So being a writer is not for everyone. Uh, it's for the lucky few who, who can actually seize the moments when they appear. You start to realize it more, you start to see it more, that, wow, I'm, I'm, I must want to be a writer, because all I want to do is write stories. Um, and, and once you, you lock into that, you know, once you realize that thing about yourself, then that's it, you're, you're doomed. You know, you're, you're going to be a writer. I, I just loved stories. I loved what stories did to me. I loved that thing where you're lying in bed late at night and your mother's told you to go to sleep, you know, 10 times over and you just can't put this book down. It's like a film being projected into your head, really. You know, you've got past the point where you're deciphering words and it's just, you know, the wind's blown against the window and you just think, oh, just a few more pages, just a couple more pages. I'll finish the chapter. I'll write one more chapter, I'll read one more chapter. Oh, a couple more pages. Oh, the sentence ends at the bottom of the page. I'll stop there, otherwise I'll keep reading. And eventually you finish this book because you could not put it down. And I just thought, if I could do for other people what these writers did for me, that would be the biggest buzz, and, um, and it is. I mean, it's, it's brilliant when you can kind of create stories in other people's heads.